Hey everybody, this is Phoenix Down, and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger. In the last episode, we got the gate key back from the Reptites and bid a fond farewell to our friend Ayla. And now it's time to return to 1000 AD so we can take the Dreamstone to Melchior so he can repair the Masamune. But before I do that, I just want to say that in between episodes, I actually went back to the Millennial Fair, beat up Gato for silver points, and used those points over at the Ten of Horrors so I could win more cat food for Chrono's cats at his house. I'm not going to show what that does just yet, but we'll get to it when we get to it. I'm, j I'm still doing that between episodes when, when it really applies every once in a while. Anyway, on my way up to this point in the, the uh, Mystic Mountains, Chrono, or Robo and Marley gained some new dual techs. So go over to Robo. They learn the Aura Beam, which we would have gotten if I had used Marley at the uh, factory or any time since we got him, pretty much. You know, it combines, I think, the, uh, what is it, the, the Laser Spin and the Aura Beam, I think, into, or the Aura Spell into the Aura Beam. It's basically the same as the Aura Whirl. It's a multi-targeting healing spell. And they also learn Ice Tackle, which is basically Marley's Ice Spell combined with Robo Tackle. It's not too bad of an attack. I don't know if I'll ever demonstrate it, but it, we got it all the same. So anyway, it's time to jump into this portal. I wanted to show you guys what it's like to transport back to the end of time from the prehistoric era. You just jump right off a cliff, right into the vortex. And now we're back at the end of time. Let's go talk to the old man, since uh, he's over here. You know, he says different things depending on what stage of the game you're at. You found a dreamstone. I'd forgotten how beautiful they are. You'll need to find someone that can process that mineral. You'll probably find him in Medina, a village near the Mystic Mountains. So basically, yeah, this is basically explaining why the uh, Medina Village gate pillar of light thing is across from the Mystic Mountains one. It's basically because they're roughly in the same place in just different time periods. The world changes a lot in 65 million years, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly where it's at. But alright, let's head over to Medina Village now. And take the Dreamstone and Masamune pieces over to Melchior. We're gonna jump out of the portal, and you know, I took a little bit of damage and fighting against the monsters on the way up to, uh, up the Mystic Mountain. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and eat some cake and recover our HP and MP. Only in video games does eating cake actually restore your HP and MP. The only time eating sweets is ever actually good for you. Alright, we're at Melchior's hut. Alright, Melchior, we got what you asked for. You found some Dreamstone? Then I'll repair the Masamune. How on earth did you get the Masamune? And the Dreamstone? No, don't tell me. I don't think my heart could take it. It'll take a little while to fix this. Alright, Mel Melchior, but we'll leave it in your hands. I shall help also. Alright, thank you, Robo. So it's just you and me now, Marley. In a stranger's house, alone. Okay, let's go downstairs. All right, here we go. All right then. These repairs seem quite difficult. Don't worry, Robo, we'll manage. Don't interrupt me when I'm conducting research. I'm sorry, Melchior, we're just bored. At any rate, leave this to me. All right, Melchior, it's in your capable hands. He's got all kinds of weapons up here on the wall, I've noticed. To repair the Masamune, we must process the Dreamstone and activate the sword. You work on the Dreamstone and I'll work on the sword. Understood. Yeah, if you didn't bring Robo along, it'd be Luca that would be helping out with the repairs instead. So he needs to find some tools. And Melchior says the same thing there. Yeah, they basically repeat the, themselves. Okay, yep, still looking for tools. Just a matter of just waiting for the cutscene to play out, and I guess for tools, Robo just needed a mug. Okay. Alright, it's done. Now bring me the Dreamstone. Understood. And we'll just continue leaving it to him, and I got stuck there for a moment. Alright, let's get started. And they're doing their thing. Melchior's bobbing his head. Robo's dancing or something. And after who knows how long that actually took, 
Sorry to keep you waiting. Oop, the light's dimming. Wow, nice. That is a nice looking sword. Take a good look. This is the Masamune. It's not an oversized katana like some certain long-haired pretty boys would wield. Awesome, what a weapon. Well, I think that's everything. Okay, Chrono, let's take the Masamune to Frog. All right, so now we gotta return to 600 AD. This weapon, weapon represents considerable power. Your actions may either save or destroy life. That's kind of, oddly, that's kind of like foreshadowing if you consider what happens in the next game that I will never be playing, unfortunately. Wield your sword with full knowledge of the consequences. And no, I don't need to buy anything. He sells the same stuff as before. The red katana and all that stuff that I don't need. But okay, let's head back over to, uh, well, the end of time first. And then 600 AD. So I'm going to jump into this guy's closet. Or cabinet or whatever this is. See you guys. Sorry to intrude. And now we return to the end of time. I want to talk to the old man one more time. But just, just to see what he has to say about the Masamune. We go up to the old man, wake him up. Sorry to keep waking you, man. What luster? The Masamune, correct? A person in the Middle Ages wants to take down Magus with that. So, okay, well, it's about as big a clue as we're ever going to get. So, all right, we're going to warp to Truce Cannon. I'm going to meet you over at the Cursed Woods because we're just heading over to Frog. So, I'll meet you guys over there. All right, we're back over in Frog's place. Tis thee again. And here's the Masamune. This sword, tis the Masamune. Okay, he has a moment to uh, ponder, I suppose. Exactly. I must ponder this turn of events. Remaineth here the night. Oh, yay, we get to have a sleepover at R Frog's place. And, ooh, somebody's dreaming or remembering something. Oh, Cyrus. Cyrus, are you leaving? Yes, it's time we took back the medal from the Frog King. And I'd like to see that mythical sword for myself. But Cyrus, the kingdom needs you. And Leanne and I need you. You must return to us. As long as there is life in these bones, I shall return. By your leave. So that's Cyrus. Looks kind of like every other knight except a little darker. In his armor, I mean. Sir Cyrus! Alright, all the troops are gathering around. We, the knights of the square table, wish you a safe journey. Listen well, my friends. I now entrust the safety of the kingdom to you. And it's off, and oh, hey, who's this guy? Pardon the delay. Shall we be off? Glenn, you be careful too. Okay, so this guy's name is Glenn. Be of sound health, your majesty. And Cyrus and his friend are off. And they are battling against Naga Ets in the Guardia Forest, apparently. Oop, Cyrus took one of them out. Nice. Looks like he's wielding some kind of red sword. And it's time for a boss battle against the Frog King. So, you want the badge of courage, dear Knight of the Kingdom? Well, come and take it, if you can, grab it. Prepare yourself, Pollywog. On guard! Nirvana Strike! Gah! How dare you pick on a helpless amphibian! Filthy metal, I won't forget this! Yeah, you never actually fight the Frog King in this game. I don't think that really counts as much of a spoiler. It'd be interesting if he was like a bonus boss later on or something. Gah! What the? Beware, Glenn! Cyrus, the sword! The Masamune! That didn't sound good, it sounded like it broke. Oh, hey, whoa, that's Ozzy and who's... I think, if that, is that guy who I think he is? Gah! Ha ha! Is that the best you can do? Without your sword, you're nothing! 
Ah, you haven't beaten me yet. Cyrus, I'm a gunner. Glenn, escape while I keep them at bay. But, but if you stay, they'll get us both. Go on, Glenn. You'd better worry more about yourself, Cyrus. Come on, Glenn, go! Ah! Oh, crap, Cyrus. Cyrus! Run, Glenn! The Queen, take care of Lien! No, Cyrus! Cyrus! Iris! No, wrong game, sorry. This can't be happening! This can't be real! Huh, <laughs> what's the matter? Aren't you going to try your luck? Uh. <laughs> Cat got your tongue, kid! How about it, Megus? Can't you give him a more fitting form? Alright, why not? There's always time for a little fun. Ah, oh crap. Ah, I'm beginning to see the uh, the picture coming together now. And there went Glenn. Ha <laughs> ha you spineless wimp. And that says a lot coming from Ozzy. And now Frog is pondering these. Ten years half past. Can I do it? I've changed so much. Alas, poor Cyrus. Oh, poor frog. I think that was him crying, shedding a tear over the blade of the Masamune. Awake of Corono. Yes, frog. Though we may fail, let us go to Megus's lair. Thou knowest his power? We must do it to save our future. We won't be beaten by a bad guy. So all right, now we get to choose our party and Frog is required. I am actually going to bring Robo again. I, I feel like he works well with Frog and Chrono for this part of the game. Sorry ladies, you guys will have to set this one out. But all right, let's get going. Now before I do anything else, we need to take Frog to the end of time to meet Spe Specchio. Because Frog can learn magic, and he is not going to learn any more text until we do that. So I will meet you guys back at the end of time. Oh, before we do that... Stam it, you dog! Before we do that, let's do a battle against this new. Alright. Gonna fight the Nasher. And attack the new with him. Do enough damage to the Nashers, and they'll kill all the frogs for me. So I'm going to have Frog and Robo go after the new. And then I'll have Chrono hit the Nasher again to get him to take out that T-Pole. And then when Robo's turn comes around, he's going to be doing some healing. Yay, counterattacks. Ah, crap. No, 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 no. Ah, crap. Chrono, no! No. I don't want to have a repeat of the Masa and Mune fight here. Okay, revived. Robo, go after the Nasher. Let's take him out so we can take out that frog. The fewer enemies, the better. Alright, there we go. Well, let's just finish off the Nasher. And Chrono took some hits. But he went for a counterattack, so I'll take it. And Frog, you finish off the Nasher. Alright, good. The snake guy's gone. Robo, time to do some... Oh, no, don't, don't tackle. Cure. Heal up, Chrono! Then we're gonna continue wailing on the new. It won't last much longer. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have a better weapon for Frog, although I should probably equip him with some prehistoric gear. And now Frog took some considerable damage. But Robo can heal him up. Yeah, this battle might not really be worth ke keeping in there just because it's basically the same as the new from the prehistoric era. Every fight with a new is basically the same. Right, you just wail away at him. 
Magic would pro probably wouldn't be a bad idea either, but Robo with the critical hit finished the job. All right. Some decent experience and some good tech points. Unfortunately, Frog didn't learn any new techs because he's not getting tech points, but we got some new uh, dual techs and our first triple tech of the game. Well, let's take a quick look at those. So we've got... We got the Blade Toss, which is basically like Sword sword Strike and uh, out of one of Robo's moves. And we have Triple Raid, our first triple tech of the game, where all three characters contribute. You know, Frog and Chrono will do X-Strike while Robo does the Robo Tackle. So let's get out of here, and I'll meet you guys at the end of time. Alright, and we're back at the end of time now. Going to do some quick healing. And while we're here, we may as well introduce Frog to the old man. This guy's kind of like our, I don't know, our manager, I suppose. Something like that. What a strange new guest. Are you from the Middle Ages? Yep, he sure is. Now let's go introduce him to Specchio and... Oh, hey, Specchio, you've uh, changed. You've filled out a little bit. That's the biggest toy I've ever seen. Hey, you're not alive, are you? Yeah, he's talking about Robo. It's one of the reasons why I brought Robo along as well. You've got great strength, however. However, since I can't measure your inner character, I can't give any magic to you. Yeah, Robo doesn't learn magic. But your laser weapons will suffice. They can inflict shadow-type damage. At least one of his attacks can. And now we have, he's talking about frog. What a weird fellow. Being a frog, oh, let's give him water. Ipso facto minimo magico. Ah, uh, poor Robo. And Frog is unfortunately blocked by the door, so we can't he can't we can't see his dramatic pose while he learns how to use magic. So I could do battle with Specchio now. Basically he changed because Chrono's at level 20 now. I'm actually amazed I'm at this level. Usually I'm not this high level before uh before doing Mag Magus's lair. But uh, I do not want to fight Specchio just yet. I will save that for a little bit later, especially since Frog's not that powerful as a magic user. And I can't get him out of the party right now. So maybe when I can use Luca and Marley at the same time, I'll do it then. But alright, time to return to 600 AD. I will meet you guys back on the world map. Alright, we're back on the world map. Yeah, during that mandatory fight with the Imp Aces, we learned some new dual techs. I guess I could show those real quick. We got the... Uh, I'll, I'll put it on Frog since he's the common denominator. We got Sword Stream, which is basically kind of like the, uh, you know, Ice Sword or Fire Sword, basically. And we got Bubble Snap, which is a, uh, which is combines Robo's Robo Tackle and Frog's Water Spell. So uh, we might see some of those moves. I don't do a whole lot of the dual techs in this game. You know, some of them aren't quite as handy. But every, every uh, dual. Every pair of characters learns three dual techs apiece, basically. But alright, we have the Magic Cave. This is the path that will take us to Megus's castle. You remember there was somebody in a poor village, I think, that mentions it. We have ourselves a little scene here. Frog's examining the wall here. He said something about the wall opening to enter, to reveal a secret cave. And now Frog is remembering things again. Memories. Ah... I guess they're not the fondest of memories. Hey, you! It's Cyrus! Run for your lives! Hey, Cyrus must be considerably older than Glenn, I take it. Thanks, Cyrus! <laughs> Glenn, there are times when people simply have to grit their teeth. Just telling Glenn to toughen up. But it hurts when I get hit. They... You're a marshmallow, Glenn. That's the weirdest uh, thing for someone from the Middle Ages to say about somebody. Didn't realize you had marshmallows back then. And as time passes, they've gotten older. Cyrus clearly is uh, a warrior of some kind, and Glenn is just a guy with kind of greenish hair. Hey, Glenn, I've been thinking about becoming a knight. I knew you were going to enlist. You'll make a great warrior. Why don't you join too? Guess Glenn has his reasons. I don't think I'd make the cut. 
But why? You're better with a sword than I am. That's heavy praise coming from Cyrus. I mean, he's not captain of the guard yet or anything like that, but... I don't know. I think I'd really lose it if I had to hurt someone. Okay, so Glenn's more of a pacifist, I guess. He's a lover, not a fighter. But now he is listening, witten, remembering this uh, tragic uh, incident where Magus cursed him. Gave him a more fitting form, as Ozzy would put it. And he's laying there at the bottom of uh, Denodoro Mountains. Is that blood coming out, of his, coming out of his mouth or is that his tongue? It's hard to tell. But what's this floating through the water towards us? Is that what I think it is? The medal. The hero's medal. The hero's medal. That's right, the one that determines who can wield the Masamune. It appears it chose him. Hand it over the Masamune! Okay, if you say so. Let's just stick this sword right in the ground. Well played, Chrono. Where were you keeping that thing, anyway? My name is Glenn. Cyrus's hopes and dreams, and now the Masamune. Forthwith, I shall slay Magus and restore honor. This is such an epic scene. Draw the Master Sword. By the power of Grey Skull, I have the power. Nice. If you're playing the PS1 version or the uh, Nintendo DS version of the game, there's an anime cutscene here. But I, I still say, you know, just watching the scene play out with the normal Super Nintendo graphics is just as satisfying, just as epic. Well played, Frog. Nice. <laughs> a little ribbit there. He's like. Let us go! Fourth! To battle! And we're in a cave and we have a bat chasing us for some reason. Okay, whatever. Let's fight these guys. We have vamps and gremlins. The vamps we can defeat with regular physical attacks. But the gremlins are resistant to uh, physical attacks, so let's resort to using water. I should have had Robo do the, uh... The, uh attack on the vamp instead. But there's the water spell. Enough damage to wipe one out. So go ahead and punch that robot. Yeah, see, they got really high physical defense and they counterattack, of course. But Chrono just blast him with some lightning. They're also pretty fast, which is kind of frustrating. So blast him with a bolt of lightning. And we defeated the, the gremlin, all right. Not too bad, some decent tech points too. By the way, now that a uh, frog has drawn the Masamune, he now has that equipped, so that's his new weapon. Considerably more powerful than the Iron Sword or the Bronze Edge, so definitely take that. And we can now also have Frog equip the Hero Medal, which boosts his critical hit rate when he's using the Masamune. So I'm going to give that to him. More critical hits, I could always use that. And I already changed up and gave him the Rock Helm and Ruby Vest, since that's much better than the stuff he started off with and we have one of these these uh, sealed boxes that we can't open yet we'll get to that eventually I it'll just be a little bit long, longer no oh, crap that's a lot of gremlins Let's just run down this way and time to do battle All right Robo you just do the laser spin when you get to your turn I don't know why I decided to show this one, but all right. Laser spin. Come on. All right, well, well played, Chrono. So now let's do some disco break dancing. Nicely played. Took them all out. It's a pretty good experience there. And oh crap, more. All right, I forgot about that second fight there. But yeah, the laser spin, that really helps against a group of enemies. And we have a soldier over here with a note written in blood. I'm amazed that they let that pass through the sensors, considering how Nintendo was back in the mid-90s. 
The juggler in Megas' castle strengthens his guard when attacked. Beware. Beware indeed. It's good to know, good to know. But here we are, guys. On the outskirts of Megas' castle. Or Megas' lair, I should say. And next time on Let's Play Chrono Trigger, we are going to begin one of my favorite dungeons of the game. We're going to take the fight to Megas, defeat his henchmen, and hopefully stop the creation of Lavos and save the future. So this has been Phoenix Down, and I will see you guys next time.